randomly new setup. There we go. Now we're going to look. Things are going to get funky in the coming weeks. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. All right. I'm going to just start over because I don't think we're actually live. So we'll just oh, okay. we'll go with that. Welcome to Vigilant News for March 2nd, 2022. I am Justin, and I am joined with my co-host, Ryan Delar. Ryan, how are we doing? Terrible. God awful. But we soldier on, don't we? Film at 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is... All right, we're good. Apologies for the technical difficulties, everybody. We had to... Um, or my computer died yesterday, and I had to get a new setup. I had to set up everything again, which took almost all day yesterday, so... Threw a real wrench in the gears. Just a sure. little bit. This dependency on technology is a little disturbing. So we got awesome news coverage today for you. We're going to get into a lot of State of the Union stuff, um, some good news, some bad news, some crazy things. <laughs> yeah, the Pelosi drive that happened yesterday. Oh my God! So uh, if you got a vomit bucket, you might need it. Just warning you on that one. But some good news at the same time. Uh, so we're going to get into the top five bizarre moments of Joe Biden's State of the Union. Uh, State of the Union commentary. Things are getting worse, not better. At least that's one perspective. I'm actually going to offer a positive spin on this, as I like to do. We're, to do that, we're actually going to go through some of the CNN coverage. Now, before you like, you know, throw yourself out the window, the CNN actually did a pretty darn good job of covering everything because I watched it myself last night. And we get to get a sense of why the deep state wants us to believe what they want us to believe by looking straight at their playbook through, as presented by CNN. So as usual, I'm going to point out a lot of the spin and the psyops in there. We also have some rapid fire related to some interesting activity from DeSantis related to um, parents not being, patients not being able to sue healthcare providers and some info on a cyber attack, the cyber attack, cyber rattling, saber rattling that we've been hearing. So if you haven't already done so, go ahead and click into the links in the description. Uh, first thing, we have a promotion going on, electromagnetic protection. You can protect yourself using electromagnetic devices. One device in particular was developed using a type of Tesla technology and technology developed by Wilhelm Reich. And this technology does actually work. I've tested it. It's called the Rest Shield. You can find a, the link in the description for that. Also, don't forget to go to stillnessinthestorm.com forward slash donate to support our work. We need all the support we can get. We've got a lot of great projects coming up. As a matter of fact, we've got an event we're going to here in May. And we're going to need to definitely some support for, for that, all that. So if you could buy us a cup of coffee, buy us a, a steak dinner if you want, we could really appreciate the support. All right, and with that, let's get right into what we got for today. So what you got for us, Ryan? So last night, there were some very bizarre moments during Joe Biden's SOTU speech. Uh, and, and the good people over at 100% Fed Up took the time to compile them for us. Mm. Uh, so number one, Joe Concha tweeted a hilarious video showing Senator Chuck Schumer jumping from his seat to clap for Joe Biden in the middle of his SOTU speech on Tuesday night. There was only one problem. The Dem senator immediately sat back down when he looked around and realized he had missed his cue and it wasn't time to stand yet. Whoops. So, uh, no, I'm going to take a look at that yeah, real quick. watch this clip. I, I've watched it like about a dozen times today. Yeah, and... yeah and the, the, the clip, the quote here is when it's all staged and you miss rehearsal mm -hmm. so here he is like oh yes i'm so happy oh, oh wait no. wait nobody got up okay darn all right wait uh, yes oh, now we can go yeah. the applause there's got to be like an applause sign up in the corner <laughs> exactly. or they got like one of those little buzzers with somebody behind the scene just being like get up get up and he just like leaned into it by accident because he yeah. coughed so that's funny yep all right so, that's so there's that, that that's funny uh, the clown show didn't stop there. Speaker Pelosi, the most powerful Democrat in Congress, made quite the scene as well. Oh my God. She wasn't tearing up speeches this time, but she was doing something very bizarre with her hands. Which, it's funny because she, this is coming right after he mentions something about soldiers dying from the like poisonous gas from the these pits that they're in. Yeah, I wonder if we, he says it in this clip. Let's take a look. Interesting, yeah. Oops. That's no volume, yeah. But as you can see, she's... Look at that. I mean... Mr. <laughs> Prince. What is she doing right there? He's like, they died violent deaths in the tar pits. And she's like... <laughs> yeah, the, it's crazy. The <laughs> clip I saw gave a little more context. So it's it kind of comes out of left field. It's not like she's getting up with everybody else. She just gets up kind of randomly and does that weird maneuver. So All that Russian vodka they dumped out, she got down in the sewers and was just guzzling. <laughs> oh, here we go. This might be yeah, a better yeah, one. Well, yeah, they mentioned it's because of these uh, toxic smoke from burn pits. Oh, yeah, maybe they right. 
Branch. Maybe this has volume. Faced in Afghanistan, faced many dangers. One being stationed at bases, breathing in toxic smoke from burn pits. <laughs> many of you have been there. <laughs> I've been in and out of a room. And then like, they cut to that. I love the burn pits and the toxic smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when he talks about that stuff. <laughs> and then they cut to uh, the, the the bellhop from Star Trek with the, the books on a Troy. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, okay, all right. Uh, then there was the incredible moment when Joe Biden attempted to make a powerful statement about the resolve of the Ukrainian people, but instead he referred to them as the Iranian people. Hmm. Kamala Harris, who is used to Joe's gaffes, appears to be mounting you, mouthing Ukrainian only moments after Joe misidentifies them. Or at least the Terminator in a skin suit that's sitting behind him there. I don't know. Shall we? Okay, let's see. Putin may circle Kiev with tanks, but he'll never gain the hearts and souls of the Iranian people. He'll never, he'll never extinguish their love of freedom. And he will never, never weaken the resistance. He'll never, he'll never extinguish their love of freedom. She seems a little tense. It's almost like... Uh, is she like the har- the arm up the mannequin that is Joe Biden? Did she like have a little delay in her in her speech? Yeah, it's you know? like uh, Obama's elbow deep in in Kamala Harris, and then she's got Joe Biden, and it's just like a puppet human centipede. <laughs> oh God! I told you you'd need Obama bucket for this episode, <laughs> yeah. everybody. <laughs> and then we have another clip where Biden explains how U.S. forces will not go to Europe to fight Ukraine. What? Yeah. Wow. Our forces are not engaged and will not engage in the conflict with Russian forces in Ukraine. Our forces are not going to Europe to fight Ukraine, but to defend our NATO allies in the event that Putin decides to keep moving west. Hmm. Oh, okay. Fight so. Ukraine, man. Yeah, <laughs> Screw so when... them. Okay, let's just, just everybody dump on them. <laughs> yeah, right. So they're not going to fight Ukraine, but they are going to defend the European allies, which is essentially that there is some type of scuttlebutt that they are going to send troops over. Yeah, but it's just like, why did he say fight Ukraine? Aren't you supposed to be on Ukraine's side? Isn't that what That's you're... exactly <laughs> like, did he forget the memo? You blew it, yeah. pal. Yeah, come on. He's probably so, like, amped on roids and amphetamines, like, <laughs> he's doing the best he can out there. It's very yeah, sad, probably. actually, yeah, to watch is. this. This is elder abuse. Mm-hmm. And for no particular reason, at the end of his speech, this is the weirdest part, Joe shouted, thank you, go get him. (laughs) Go get who? Go get who? So, yeah, I'm guessing something came through in the earpiece, and Mm. he just is used to mouthing everything that he hears and said it. So, yeah, it's not the first time. Not the first time. Let's take a listen. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you. Go get him. Go get him. Yeah, that wasn't like a that wasn't like a go get him. Like go get him, guys. You guys are gonna do great. It was like go get him. Like he like you said. Somebody whispered something in his ear. That's crazy. Get the dolly. Wheel him off the stage. <laughs> then you have Donald Trump. Donald Trump Jr. nailed mumbling Joe Biden's speech with this tweet. Oh boy. Let's You're get really ready mumbling. to mumble. I mean, yeah, I get it. You, it's your it's your adversary. It's just sad that this is happening to this man. Mm-hmm. And arguably, this could all be intentional. You know, when you intentionally destroy the country from within, you can blame it on the bumbling old senile man, mm-hmm. even though it's completely Obama, the DNC, Soros, Kamala, all that whole political, you know, cabal is pulling the strings of this old guy who may or may not be as mentally fermented as he appears. Right. So yeah, we're living in bizarre times, and there you have it, folks. Those are uh, the five Those highlights the of this. Stories. But what's interesting is that everything in between all of these gaps and goofs, which anybody could have done, Trump mm-hmm. makes mistakes on stage, you know, not not quite as big mistakes, but you know, it happens. It happens with everyone. But uh, the thing is, is that a lot of his State of the Union address seems to have been plagiarized by Donald Trump's State right. of the Union address, mm-hmm. talking about making semiconductors in America, bringing manufacturing back, finishing the border, <laughs> all uh, kinds of things. Not defunding the police. Yeah, funding the police. It's just like, okay, you just, yeah, all right. So I see I see your angle there. Right, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm going to get into. So I'm going to do something that I rarely do, but I wanted to, two things, take the opportunity to make sure that when we pull information, you know, when you're out there in your quest for truth, we often want to look for good sources, and you should look for good sources. And we might say something like, well, CNN is lying, and therefore, you know, because they're fake news, you shouldn't use them as a source for information. Well, to a certain extent, that's true, but that's sort of, uh, there's a deeper level of analysis, which is that 
when you look at what CNN is putting out there, it's kind of like you get to see what the cabal wants the world to believe, what the narrative they're pushing out there. And as a result, you can get a really good sense of what the playbook of the, the powers that be are. Yeah, I mean, all information is coming from a subjective place. So even CNN, maybe some of these people believe the things that they're saying, maybe the people who aren't embedded CIA agents or CIA personnel, you know, maybe they believe these things. Or at least, if even if not, the people who are consuming it believe it. So it's like get into their headspace a little bit, you know. Exactly. And the stuff that we're getting fed, even if it comes from the sources we think we trust, doesn't mean that it's any less propaganda. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, CNN certainly puts out openly fake stories and lies. That does happen. Yeah. But in this case, they're essentially reporting on very factual things about the State of the Union. I know because I watched it. So what we're going to read are essentially the, the bullet points and facts that came out of CNN related to the State of the Union, which will A, give us an opportunity to review what was actually said so you know what was said, and B, you get to see what the spin they put underneath it, and that's really where the, the, the propaganda, the narrative control actually is. It's the spin. How do they interpret what was said? What are they trying to sell it to you as? What do they want you to believe? So we're going to get a good case study of that kind of thing, reviewing some of this information. Let's get into it. And by the way, of course, we are doing this on YouTube. Um, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, but uh, we did not have, we were going to have the mega stream today. Because my computer died on Monday night, I, we couldn't prepare for anything. Literally, I spent almost all day yesterday, with the exception of two hours, just recovering from that, getting this computer set up so we can actually do a broadcast today. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to have a more casual, longer stream on Friday. Um, and we're still putting that together, so keep your eye out for that. Thank you for all those who support, or, uh, support us on Subscribestar, which you can find links in the description. It really helps weather these types of challenges like this. So I just wanted to let everybody know about that. All right, let's get into this. So this is an article right on CNN Politics. Now is our moment. Biden confronts Putin and tries to kickstart his domestic agenda in State of the Union. So right away, we have the spin doctors trying to sell you on the fact that you know, Biden confronted Putin, uh, Putin. Yeah. you know, but did he really? Well, let's find out. I would argue it was a lot of lip flapping and not a whole lot of meaningful confrontation. President Joe Biden closed this first State of the Union address Tuesday night with a resounding sense of optimism and unity as the world watches Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Yes, it was resounding unity for sure. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Right away, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, did the Russia-Ukraine situation unfold in such a way that would give uh, Biden the wartime president shtick that he needs to really present a strong front? A little bump in approval ratings that typically come with that sort of thing. Exactly. So now let's quote directly from Biden saying, I, listen to, you know, ask yourself as, you're, as I'm reading this, what is the, the actual meaning here? Because it's written in such a hazy ambiguous way that you can essentially invoke any positive meaning you want and that's kind of the whole point it's a type of I would argue mass hypnosis so now is the hour our moment of responsibility our test of resolve and conscience of history itself it is in this moment that our character is formed our purpose is found our future is forged it all sounds really pretty and you know there, that is generally true in any type of situation where we're being presented with challenges. What are you going to do? Are you going to rise to the occasion? Are you going to take the opportunity to do the right thing? Yeah, I know anybody, I would argue, who's got a desire to make the world a better place can t get behind this language, and that's the whole point. But what isn't clear is what he means and what the, the people behind him mean by this statement. What is the moment to take what kind of responsibility? That's the question. He continues. While I know this nation, we will meet the test to protect freedom and liberty, to expand fairness and opportunity. We will save democracy. As hard as these times have been, I am more optimistic about America today than I have been in my whole life. Again, a lot of America first rhetoric, like you were saying, Ryan, you know, we, you could easily hear Trump uttering these type of words. And that's what a lot of people were saying across the board is essentially Biden kind of stole the Trump playbook and was using it in his own house. The difference is that Trump has laid out plans, not just Trump, I mean, other people working with him, <clears throat> but they've laid out plans and actually done these things. Joe Biden is just saying them. So. Yeah, very good point. Another point to consider, uh, one of these days I'll have to pull this, but there was a war, uh, I believe it was a war uh, briefing that was issued in the 20s about the use of the word democracy, and it was being uh, discussed in relation to the Bolshevik Revolution that was happening in the early of 20th century. 
And in that, they were describing how the use of the word democracy is actually essentially uh, communist propaganda to twist and distort the values of people so that they start to buy into communism. Make you forget that you're living in a republic. Exactly. So we do not live in a democracy. We live in a republic. Now, the terminology has been watered down a bit, but without getting into a massive discourse in civics, when we they say democracy, they do not mean where a place, a government where every individual citizen has the right to contribute to the way the government is run and ensure that all of our rights are protected and defended. That is not what they mean. What they mean by democracy is mob rule, where the majority of the population follows a bunch of leaders that don't really understand, the population doesn't really understand what they're doing, but it's done through a kind of emotional populism. And behind the scenes of that is the cabal agenda, I would argue. So... Uh, the president also said, the state of the union is strong because you, the American people, are strong. More America first pandering. We are stronger today than we were years ago, Biden said. And we will be stronger a year from now than we are today. Now is our moment to meet and overcome the challenges of our time. And we will, as one people, one America, the United States of America. More America first rhetoric. And what I would argue he's doing is he's, he's painting a picture in your mind of a positive future that everybody's going towards and won't, don't you want to fit in? Don't you want to come with everybody who's, uh, who's going to be going to this amazing place where America's just happy and sunshine and roses? Uh, so look, there's a lot in here. I'm going to try to skip to some, some of the other things. Uh, Biden argued that Putin's aggression had not had made, uh, excuse me, Biden argued that Putin's aggression had only made the world's democracy strengthen their resolve to counter rising autocracies. Six days ago, this is Biden speaking now, Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it, make it a bend to his menacing ways, make it bend to his menacing ways. But he badly miscalculated. He thought he could roll into Ukraine and the world would roll over. Instead, we met a, he, met a wall, he met a wall of strength he never imagined. He met the Ukrainian people. I'm not even sure what he's talking about there. Because as far as I know, there's no massive like groundswell uprising to defeat Putin. Although they're kind of trying to push that with the whole Ghost of Kiev nonsense. Mm. And the Snake Island. And the Snake Island, exactly. So he goes on to say, uh, inflicting pain on Russia and supporting the people of Ukraine and choking of the Russian a access to technology will sap its economic strength and weaken its military for years to come. You know, yes, it'll weaken its military, but you know what the cost of these sanctions are? It's going to hurt the people way more than it's going to hurt the, mer the military. Yeah, and that's arguably what they're trying to do, is really just hurt the nations of the world, hurt the people of the world, really make them experience like you know how fragile everything is, feel the pain, and then present a great reset or something similar. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, um, let me see. There's a lot in here. I, I don't really have time to go over everything. We could arguably do like a whole hour just on how the spin is, but... Give this article a read and look, to, look at what was talked about. First, ask yourself, are they speaking factually? Are these real quotes? And what you'll find is they are real quotes. They did actually come from the State of the Union. So that means in that dimension, they're not pushing untruth. They're not pushing fake news. It's the way that these statements are spun. And I think whoever wrote the speech wrote it in such a hazy, nebulous, and ambiguous way because you don't necessarily know exactly what they're talking about here, so that the spin doctors in the mainstream media can then take that speech and spin it in whatever way they want. And so you've got a perfect hand and glove synchrony between the Biden administration and the media cohorts that support them. Just because you're a good writer uh, doesn't mean that everything you write should be taken as gospel. Yeah. In fact, as a writer, I can say that most writers don't really put a whole lot of thought into the consequences of their writing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they, they see their one subjective viewpoint and have no consideration for any of the consequences of spout, uh, you know, spouting it. So, And most of these people might not even, you know, some of these writers might just be completely apolitical and not care, just know how to write the right words. So That's true. Consider that, you know, a lot of people want to look at other people as... If so, oh, they're a better writer than me, so maybe they have a better understanding mm -hmm. of what's going on in the world. Right. Not not quite. doesn't really work that way, so I'm yeah. just, just my two cents on the matter. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on. Uh, Tiffany says, so hard to tell what news is real. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Tiffany. How's it going, by the way? Good to see you in the chat. Um, yeah, it's really hard to tell, and that's kind of the point. They, I would argue what they're trying to do is they're trying to make things so damn confusing that you're just like, 
I don't know what's real, but I'm just going to believe whatever I need to believe to keep going to tomorrow. And it's so. like our culture has created this thing where if you don't know something, then you're shit. You have no opinion. Get out of here. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, no, we, I think we need to develop the ability to know that we don't know and just consider a broad range of things. You know, consider mm-hmm. all of the narratives and then kind of like wait and see what reality proves is right, you know. Agreed. So yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's more wise to admit that you don't know. Mm-hmm. When everyone wants to be right. Everyone wants to be the, the guy on Twitter owning somebody else or like the YouTube debater whose point was right. You know what I mean? It's mm. just like, don't get so wrapped up on your own like, Dude, experience. You, yeah, you're so right. Because I, I mean, we watch some, some news people out there and I'm sure they have a pretty good sense. But how can anybody present themselves as knowing everything about a situation within hours after it's happening? And that's kind of the, the take we see a lot of times. So. And it seems like, in reality, there is no one explanation for things. I mean, some things can be distilled down to that, but, like, there's as many um, ways to look at something as there are people to observe it. So Right, exactly. All right, well, you got a piece from the uh, activist uh, it's, post. It's more commentary, but I'm going to pull it from a piece. Okay, like, okay, The piece itself ahead. doesn't really matter. There's a lot of stuff in there. Do you want... It's kind of like a state of the union that should have happened, things that should have been talked about. Mm, mm-hmm. So it's a dangerous time for America and the world. Uh, you hear plenty about the dangers posed by Russia and COVID-19 uh, in, president, in the state of the union, but it's still the U.S. government that poses the gravest threat to our freedoms. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. Listening to the government talk to us about how everything's going to be great, everyone's going to be unified, we're going to stick it to Putin and all this stuff, it's it's kind of like you forget that they're the enemy. They're the ones who are causing a lot of these problems. So mm-hmm. here's some things that we should, should have talked about maybe. The Americans have little protection against the police abuse, and that's not saying all police are out there to abuse you, but right. there, there is something that's missing, and it's not going to be fixed by... Biden stopping all of these things that police need to do to do their job and enforcing cameras being worn, maybe that'll help and maybe maybe make people think twice before executing people in the street, uh, which is often done on accident, unfortunately. Uh, Oftentimes, maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know those people. So uh, the thing is, maybe there's some sort of screening process that we could do and implement. You know, I don't think that's been talked about enough. We live in a world where we just completely ignore psychology Mm. for the most part and just continue on like everything's fine. Um, So maybe something there. Maybe there's a psychological screening process that can happen to eliminate police that, you know, abuse their power. Uh, Americans are still little more than pocketbooks to, to fund this police state. That's a kind of an important detail to note. Uh, Americans are no longer innocent until proven guilty. Yep. I think January 6th has proven that pretty thoroughly. That's right. If there, is an, uh, if there is any absolute maxim by which the federal government seems to operate, it is that the American taxpayer always gets ripped off, and this is true. Mm. Uh, and also then arrested <laughs> if you don't you know, <laughs> right. you don't play ball so Americans are no longer innocent until proven guilty that's a big that's a big one Americans no longer have the right to self defense which is mm. not true yet but you know if some of the some of the, the verbiage at the um, at the State of the Union would imply that that's where they're going next and it's where they've always been trying to go mm-hmm Americans no longer have the right to private property. If government agents can invade your home, break down your doors, kill your dog, damage your furniture, and terrorize your family, your property is no longer private and secure. That's right. It belongs to the government. So, yes, we are. We don't want to defund the police. We, we do want to stick up for the cops that are doing their job because you will always need some sort of policing element as long as darkness still exists in people's hearts and bad things are happening, which could arguably be always. So... Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah there's that it's like you got to draw a distinction it's not such a cut and dry thing it's very nuanced uh americans no longer have a say about what their children are exposed to in school that's a big thing uh and you know you got the fbi just going down and and you know uh, trying to stop these parents at these board meetings americans are powerless in the face of militarized police forces this is coming out of activist post they're not the most receptive to police uh, Americans no longer have a right to bodily integrity. That's a big one. Oh, yeah. I think there's a lot of trucks moving to D.C. right now over that topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Americans no longer have a right to, to the expectation of privacy. Uh, yeah, in the age of Facebook and big tech and everything, it's like data harvesting is the new modern gold rush. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Americans no longer have a representative government. You have uh, a bunch of mascots who who put on these you know productions like the State of the Union, where they you know had old crow Mitch McConnell there, Chuck Schumer not knowing when to clap. It's just like the whole, it's like a whole production. It's like WCW or the WWF for like politics, and it's like at some point, just like when you were a kid and they told you those wrestlers aren't really fighting each other. You need to learn that these politicians aren't really doing anything for the American people. That's right. It's just mm-hmm. a big show. Uh, Americans can no longer rely on the courts to met out justice, and that's a big thing. And it's huge. Yeah. Maybe this new Supreme Court justice isn't you know all, everything that people are suspect she'll be, uh, which is just you know another piece on the chessboard for the Obama, uh, Soros, deep state faction. Um, maybe she'll do something good I don't know I don't want to say just yeah, because of her affiliations more. what she will and will not do but I can take it if I had to bet you know mm-hmm. so there's that so those are just some of the issues that are still going on that were not addressed at the State of the Union there's tons of things that were not addressed at the State of the Union of course it's just whatever is sensationalized in the media at the time that they'll talk about and then whatever little Trump plagiarizations they can make so. right yeah exactly so, so I mean, there's that let's go over I have a uh Another CNN piece that goes over some other things, and I have a, something to share in relation to this. So I told when I started this video, we talked about how um, there's some good news behind everything that happened, and there is, I would argue, really good news. So I'm going to drip that in as we begin to go through this. And I wanted to cover a little bit more about what actually was said by Biden yesterday. So in uh, Biden. Let's see. Ever since Ronald Reagan's first uh, honored guest, he invited the U.S. ambassador. So this is more of the sympathy pandering. I don't know. I Admittedly, I don't necessarily know who this woman is other than what they say, which is the Ukrainian ambassador. However, you know, her, you couldn't have picked a more sympathetic face to want to empathize with when you're looking at somebody like this. I mean, look at that face. Just like, so like, she's about to like cry a tear right there. And that's kind of the the Hollywood-esque production that they bring to the State of the Union these days, sympathy. Uh, history making the backdrop, the first time ever two women, Vice President Kamala and Harris, Speaker uh, and Kamala Harris, and ne- Speaker Nancy Pelosi were sitting behind the President. So mind you, this is the fir- first State of the Union. I had forgotten, actually, that this was Trump uh, Biden's first State of the Union. He didn't do one last year, which is a little strange at least in my memory, and perhaps that's always the case. Well, with maybe you. they were just waiting for a time when they could dominate the entire speech with nothing that has to do with America and just Ukraine. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, and that's a good point, actually. If, if Biden had done the State of the Union last year, what would he have said? Well, we're going to raise your gas prices. We're going to ruin your, you know, your children's education. We're going to force toxic vaccines down your throat. Going to break you know. the record of COVID numbers. And deaths. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean... Yeah, so a return to normal. So as the camera panned to the White House chamber before he, uh, Biden spoke, I couldn't see a single person wearing a mask. Wow, it's almost like COVID's finally gone away under Biden, and you know we can finally get back to normal under this Stockholm hostage situation that we've been under for two years. Silly. So they're selling us on the idea that Biden is the one. It came under Biden. You know, Keep in mind that when we think about things that happen in, in this country, and in the world, we often associate them to the, the sitting president, right? Oh, well, this happened under Trump, therefore we can say Trump helped affect it. Or this happened under Biden, so therefore we can blame Biden. You know, that's kind of what they're trying to do here at Argue. They're using the, the psychology of association to get you to believe that, hey, we've finally taken the thumb screws off for a little bit. Aren't you happy that you have a little relief? And you know who you can thank for that? Your good old buddy Biden. He said, uh, so after the whole masks thing, it was, it felt like every state of the union before the world heard the words COVID-19. Biden said at one point, so they're again using language to say, hey, this is the new normal. At one point, Biden said, we are moving safely forward. uh, We are moving forward safely back to normal routines. And another line, thanks to the progress we have made in the past year, COVID-19 no longer control our lives. Well, I don't know about him, but I have been living my life pretty just the yeah. normal as ever for like the last year at least. I mean, Certainly. For me, COVID was over last March. So, I mean, yeah. but then again, I'm just a, a maniac who just wants to get everyone sick. Yeah, what do you know? I mean, come on now. <laughs> um, p- pushing the reset button on COVID-19. Hmm. I, I don't have a mug. I got the, the socialism mug right now, which, you know, I think I've shown you guys. You can get it, uh, you can get it on my website, uh, the store. 
And if it's not there, I'll make sure it's up there soon. But, you know, keep in mind that the Great Reset has been woven into this COVID-19 agenda, and it's openly admitted. It's kind of woven into this Ukraine situation, too. I mean, they'll use any excuse they can to push it. So. Right, exactly. Well, he said, let's stop looking at COVID-19 as a partisan dividing line and see that for what it is, a god-awful disease. And yet, we it is a partisan dividing line because there's a definitive dis, di, uh line of demarcation between the leftists who support the authoritarian control system of mass mandates, vaccine mandates, all sorts of things like that, and people who want to use freedom. And you can see that in the way that policies are in the states. Also, it's divided by how they view the virus. The left views it as like it might as well be airborne AIDS, and the right is like, oh, 99.7% survival rate? I'll right. take my chances. You know what yeah. I mean? So. And, and, you know, the... They are trying to muddy waters that should never never be muddied. What do I mean by that? I mean the truth should always cut a clear line through lies. You know, there's a, a quote, I don't know who said it, but if it can be destroyed by the truth, then it should be. You know, uh, I think that was Snoopy. Was, was it? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, Snoopy's, you know, Peanuts, he's great. Maybe Charlie Brown. Um, <laughs> But, you know, we should not just be like, hey, guys, let's just form arm in arm, even though what, that what you're suggesting is to kill, essentially, uh, some portion of the population in the name of saving another portion of the population, a la vaccine mandates, and um, that we should inflict untold damage onto our children to protect who exactly? The children well, who are mostly immune to this disease, admitted by the CDC, or to, um, you know, protect... Uh, teachers who are also 99.97 percent defend or a lot likely to have major complications from COVID. So you know we need there does need to be a definitive difference, and there is a definitive difference, and we should not necessarily walk arm in arm with people who are advocating for massive um, draconian solutions. That being said, we shouldn't also grab our pitchforks and cause massive yeah, issues you either. You always want the best for people, you know. Of course, even if they're perceived, even Vladimir Putin, you know, like. Whoever, uh, whoever we're supposed to think is the worst right now, basically, you, you want the best for them. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like we're all a collective human family. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it was Linus, not Charlie Brown. I sent you an image of you. Oh, was it really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Linus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Linus will forgive you this one. Okay, all right. Sorry, Linus. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so they're trying to. They're, anytime you see this push for unity, think like Stockholm Syndrome. You know, should you be unified with a rapist? Should you be unified with a guy who wants to burn your house down because he doesn't like the things you say on social media? No, what you should do is you just grab your firearm or whatever method of defense you have and defend your house against an insane person like that. So we have fund the police. This is an interesting, this is where we're starting to get into some about facing and I, I, the media spin with respect to CNN. Like if, what does CNN have to say about the fact that essentially Biden lifted the whole Trump agenda and is spouting it on his own? Well, well, I wonder what the squad has to say. I know at least Tlaib was, you know, a little critical of some of the things Biden said last night. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So Democrats have been facing calls from their most liberal members to defund the police amid a series of high-profile shootings of people of color. The simple fact is that American public has little interest in pulling money away from police departments. Yeah, that's exactly right. Biden delivered a stirring rebuke to his party's base by insisting, quote, the answer is not to defund the police. It's to fund the police, fund them, fund them. The chamber erupted in applause, a rare moment of mostly bipartisan agreement. So now they're essentially saying that it, this is whoever crafted this is really brilliant the way they did it. So they're acknowledged for the people who are pissed off about the fact that we aren't defunding the police. There's this statement. The simple fact is that American public has little interest in pulling uh, money away from police departments. Therefore, reinforcing the belief that America is, in fact, a racist nation and we should be, you know, all feel really guilty. That's the pandering right there, I would argue. But here's the thing. If Biden has given any indication in his previous behavior that this probably will never happen, you know, they'll say whatever they can to, like, get raise their chances for the midterms to stay in power. That doesn't mean they're going to do these things. Right. You know? so, exactly. It's a pandering fest. Yeah, you can't believe a single word they say. There's a reason why they say everything. It's not usually the way they present it. Right. Now, we have calls for bipartisanship. Of course we do, because they want to present the idea of unity and kumbaya in an election year. Biden sprinkled his speech with lines like, thanks to my Republican friends, and repeatedly acknowledged that there were real differences of opinion on major issues. He said, it's important for us to show that the nation, it's important for us to show the nation that we can come together and do big things. 
Biden then proposed a series of proposals addressing the opioid crisis, taking care of veterans that he believed could be done on a bipartisan basis. Well, again, it all sounds like wonderful kumbaya, but what does that actually mean? Does that mean we're really going to see bipartisanship? Or does that mean we're going to have people with openly, objectively toxic views and totalitarian views be like, hey, you know what? Maybe removing a body at bodily autonomy in favor of a vaccine that doesn't actually work isn't such a good idea. Sorry for pushing that, everybody. I doubt it. Stephen Beyer, Biden personally acknowledges the retiring Supreme Court, who was treated at, to attend an applause, uh, to extend, to extended applause, excuse me, I'm having a hard time reading today, uh, court justice who was treated to an extended applause for his years on the court. It was a rare Roman to, moment of genuine emotion, genuine emotion in a formal speech. I doubt it. Most likely what the guy was saying was like, you know, I can picture the justice shaking his hand and be like, you son of a bitch, why did you force me out of the seat? Yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah, right. <laughs> he just has to stay very reserved because if he made a scene on TV, he'd be kaput. Yeah, exactly. All it's right. It's just like some of these things, though, even the opiate thing, it's like they say this now and then in a year from now, if they have one, so assuming they win again, which I doubt will happen, they'd mm -hmm. be like all of a sudden flip-flop on it. And now it's like, oh, mandatory fentanyl for all kids under 12. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so, so what is the benefit? Let me, you know, I mentioned that there was a benefit. Well, th two things. First, the, the biggest problem our world has faced uh, over the years, I'm going to just stop the screen while I do this, is the over-reliance on authoritarianism. We are all addicted to our, our captors essentially running our lives. And it's not, I don't say that to shame people, I'm just saying that as a statement of fact. And the reason why is because we don't know how to think for ourselves and we don't know how to recognize substance from image. We don't know how to tell the difference between something that sounds good pouring out of a liar's mouth and an actual real good thing pouring out of a guy's mouth who's willing to tell us a truth that is a little bit unsettling, like Trump used to do, right? So the fact that Biden lifted Trump's agenda and is now putting it out of his mouth means that what the people really want is the substance. And what they want is they want not, you know, globalism. They want America first, to put it very simply. And that is really good news. It means that the people of the world, or the very least the people of the United States, don't want what Biden is selling. They aren't buying the Great Reset, Green New Deal agenda. And they are so thoroughly sick of it that they're willing to even hear from somebody like Biden an American first agenda. Which means that it's not about Trump. And that's the reason why we had all this progress over the past few years. It's because people really want a free and more prosperous world. And it doesn't necessarily have to come through the hands of Trump, which I think is good news because we need to get out of the savior mentality that Trump is going to save the world for us and get into the mentality of we the people doing the objectively right thing, which we used to call righteousness back in the day, is actually a solution to our problems, not another savior. It's a terrifying thing, terrifying prospect, taking agency over your own life. But <laughs> right. at some point, to some extent, you might have to. So mm -hmm. Consider it, at least. Yeah, just give it some thought. So uh, apologies for taking so long on this one. Let me just blast through some a little bit more of this, and then we'll get uh, through here. So if you might have heard, if you haven't listened to State of the Union, you hear some female voices throwing things or saying some things at Biden that I don't think he wanted to hear. And that apparently was Lauren Boebart and possibly Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, they were sitting together. So. They were sitting together. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't know actually what I have to say here. So let's see. Colorado's Boebart and uh, Georgia's Greene, two of the most prominent members of the ha hardline House Freedom Caucus, turned their backs and refused to applause as Biden's cabinet was introduced and took their seats in the White House chamber. In the House chamber, excuse me. How dare they exercise their right to turn yeah. their backs? Yeah. Now, mind you, what happened when... Uh, AOC heard the State of the Union from Trump, from Trump. Didn't she like not applause or do anything? But apparently that's not lame. But well, what they did was brave. Lame. That's the big difference. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I must have missed the playbook on that one. So there was that. Um, the work from home crowd. Biden made it clear in the speech that he believed it was time for the people to begin work, getting back to work. Following two years of COVID-19 changes, it's time for Americans to get back to work and fill our great downtowns again. Biden said, "People working from home can feel safe." to begin to return to the office. Right, because we're getting back to the new normal again. The Iranian people, Biden wrapped up a section of the speech dedicated to the Russian invasion. He thought, sought to praise the Ukrainian people, except he said Iranian people. So Whoopsie. they're actually admitting that he missaid something. Wow, who'd have thought? Great job. And they have, of course, Schumer in there. Get them a Pulitzer. <laughs> so, you know, this is in conclusion of this whole CNN spin thing. Remember, they, the, the, any fake news outlet has to walk the line between 
open lies and telling the truth. They have to use the lie sandwich technique. And what CNN just did here is they presented a decent portion of the truth and then wove in the spin with it and using very subtle and you know deceptive means. And people who can't really discern beyond that, they're going to see that, oh, they mentioned those goofs, you know, and so they, they are being objective, but they're not really, right. like these goofs are, are cosmetic. They're not important. They have nothing to do with what's going on in this country. Whether or not Chuck Schumer stood up at the right time or whether Biden mumbled on a word, that stuff is not important. And a lot of conservative pundits like to use that and a lot of, you know, media, we're guilty of it, you know, I mean, it's sensational. People are going to click on it, but mm -hmm. it really doesn't have anything to do with the core of what's going on here. Right. So CNN completely, those are the misses in CNN's eyes. There's like, I could write a book about all the misses that both Biden and CNN missed here in compiling these misses. Precisely. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Okay, and uh, let's see, we got some rapid fires we can get through real quick. So why don't you do the uh, cyber attack one and then I'll do, get into mine. Uh, more experts are warning that the U.S. electric grid is extremely vulnerable to cyber attacks that could knock out the entire grid. Right. So it's it's called auguries, grim auguries of mm -hmm. what's to come. You know, you plant an idea in the seed, you keep repeating it in the news headlines, and then when it happens, it's not a big surprise. Exactly. But it's like, the more they do that, the more eventually, I mean... People like Brian Cades, X-22, et cetera, et cetera, have been talking about cyber attacks being the number one, like, the nuke of the information mm -hmm. war, basically. When you're fighting an information war and you can't, the, the truth can't be spun and it's just such a hard truth that's going to, like, annihilate everything. Just like losing Ukraine. Using Lucra you, losing Ukraine could be the end of the deep state as we know it. You know, like, taking out the, the core mm -hmm. of where a lot of sh stuff's going on. A lot of operations are going on. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know about that. I just know people believe that. So right, right. That's what they're talking about. There. You got to talk about the things people believe, whether or not they're true. You know what I mean? That's because right. Because the fact that they believe them makes it true to some extent, because they're conducting their lives as if that's the truth. Bingo. Yeah. Exactly. So you know. So yeah, the whole cyber attack thing. It, it's something we will likely see in the future, and I don't know what form it's going to take. If it's going to be because of Russia, Ukraine, or if it's going to be something else. It seems like that's the conduit for allowing that sort of thing to happen. So. Right. Well, you know, the, and this is how a lot of predictive programming works. Like, how does advertising happen? Well, they pound advertisements down your, your throat for months before a new vodka comes out, before a new car comes out. And it, the idea of it is in your head, so when it actually gets seen, you just start to get moved towards that idea that was implanted in your head. I think it's the same thing with this. Klaus Schwab mentioned the idea of a cyber attack ushering in the Great Reset. You know, so keep all that in mind. Um, so Shit this, global reset. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a somewhat disturbing article. I'm not spent a, spent a whole lot of time on this, but DeSantis signs a bill blocking families and patients from filing lawsuits against healthcare providers over COVID-19. That's a weird thing. And you know, uh, did you look any further into this? Is uh, this just the Tennessee star making a spin on something or trying to attack him? Or? No, it, it definitely happened. So okay. I know it definitely happened. The is question it? is why and for what purpose? That's mm -hmm. what yeah. the spin is all about. A lot of people think that this is, you know, proof that DeSantis is actually just a shill and he was just buttering us up for some more draconian things. I don't actually think that's the case. Uh, I, what I'm about to say is my theory about what the bill is about. I haven't read the bill, so I, well, I reserve the right to correct what I'm about to say here in the future. <laughs> but um, what my suspicion is, is that imagine you're a nurse and you've just administered a vaccine that caused somebody to get a vaccine industry and injury. By the way, since I'm on YouTube, let me say this. Anything we said here in this stream is not medical advice. Please always seek a medical professional about anything related to your health and do not listen to us. Okay. So... Imagine you're a nurse, you administered a toxic vaccine potentially to somebody, and now they have a case, right? They could sue you. Well, if the, the real person to blame isn't the nurse who was, you know, do, granted following orders, but they believed that under their best uh, circumstances that they were actually just trying to help you, then you, won't, you don't want to sue the nurse necessarily. What you want to do is you want to sue the vaccine manufacturer who knew that they were bad batches of vaccines and pushed it onto people anyway. Bear in mind also that the CDC just recently admitted that reducing the frequency of these COVID vaccines would likely improve myocarditis symptomology. In other words, quietly essentially linking the idea of the vaccines with myocarditis and pericarditis. So 
I think what is another interpretation to this, and again, this is just my personal view, I don't know if this is even the right one, is that maybe DeSantis is trying to protect healthcare workers who didn't know that they were accidentally pushing toxic vaccines to try to create a pathway to sue the actual people. And maybe he you knows something that's coming down the pike that could be like, you know, so many lawsuits when something is revealed that it would just collapse Big Pharma as we know it. And that's not necessarily 100% a good thing because there's a lot of things that Big Pharma does that are needed by people. Mm. And if those companies collapse like that... Yeah, you got to be real careful. you got to yeah. fin- handle it with some finesse, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know the right thing to do in that situation, but you'd think it would be like create some kind of government fund to compensate the people who were hurt. And with that would... You know, make the big pharma companies pay into it, but not to the point where they are completely demolished and destroyed, and then figure out a way to gut them and put good people in there and turn them into something positive. That's You're going to need idea. something like that. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. you're not just going to have you know the local apothecary again. We're not going to go back to that. There's <laughs> right. going to have to be some sort of like replacement of all these old institutions and polarize them in a positive way somehow. I yeah. Think. Well, we have to be strategic about this. And as as good as it would feel to lynch some people who did something wrong that you know they might not even know that they did wrong, like you know a doctor who pushed a lot of toxic vaccines, is that really going to solve the problem? You know. So. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of these doctors and nurses are just doing what they've been trained to do, what they think is right. When they're doing it, they believe that they're helping. You know, so. Right. And there's a you know some people be like, oh, but you guys are just saying you know if they. The excuse, I just followed my orders, was a valid one. That's not what we're saying here. There's a big difference between a Nazi soldier who's pulling a lever on a gas or an oven, knowing exactly what he's doing is wrong and doing it anyway, saying, I'm just following orders, and somebody injecting a vaccine into somebody's arm who they believe, with all reasonable uh, you know, justification, that they are actually doing something good. That's a totally different situation. So, um, okay, so let's, we got a couple funny images I just wanted to show real quick, and then we can wrap up. So... Good stuff here. Um, there was, uh, as usual, in the age of the internet, there's a bonanza of hilarious images to choose from. This one, as you can see here, we have Trump's speech. I'm not sure what year this is. Um, I think it's actually the last one because you got all the the, the white folks here. The what is it? The pack. The... They were wearing white for uh, I think something about being feminine, or it was like a white. It was all women, basically. Yeah, it that. wasn't Taleb and AOC in that crowd. That's when yep, she. Yeah, and basically just a ton of you know. Uh, female D's. Mm-hmm. Female D's, that's a phrase for the ages right there. Um, <laughs> and then you have uh, um, Biden's first State of the Union on the below, and there's almost nobody there. So, yeah, take that for what it is. And it's just kind of like they're all like standing around doing weird stuff. Maybe this is a misleading photograph because the people haven't yet taken their seats, but I yeah. mean, there's objectively more people in the room in the Donald Trump one. There yeah. seems to be some sort of order Who'd have thought? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so take that for what it is. Now, there's this one. This is the image that you had found earlier. Uh, I just yeah. wanted to mention that. If it can be destroyed by the truth, it deserves to be destroyed by the truth. I Man. love that phrase. Man, I love that phrase. Now, you also want to be careful. You don't want to rip the, your your child's little illusions away at three years old because you think they need to learn about you know the, the core of the world necessarily. But, but how do you determine what's truth? <sighs> Well, that's, we'll have to get into that in another episode of, of uh, the show here. And then last thing, I just wanted to show you um, something I thought was a funny piece of commentary. And we'll move on from there. They lied, to, they lied about the Gulf of Tenkin. They lied about two weeks to slow the spread. They lied about masks and lockdowns. They lied about the vaccine's effectiveness and safety. But don't worry, they're totally telling the truth about Ukraine and Putin. Um, I wrote that the other day because I had watched uh, uh, a professor on Dr. Jordan Peterson. I wanted to see, like, what is this, the academic world saying about all this? And it was like he was reading right off of MSNBC. Like, you know, the whole uh, Putin's a mad war dog who's, you know, he can't be trusted. He was just a really terrible KGB agent and he's just like a wild cannon, you know, the usual, like, bad, evil dictator mantra that we hear from people. And historians sometimes get swept up in it. And I was thinking to myself, I'm listening to this, even Peterson even said it in the interview, he's like, how do you know any of this? Like, what is your evidence to support what you're saying? And the <laughs> guy presented a very flimsy presentation. Now, I'm not, I don't have proof to say that that isn't the case, because I don't really know Putin. I'm not there. But I have seen Putin speak and seen what he's done over the years. And I do not get the impression that Putin is some, like, drug-addicted, wild, mad dog. who's With cancer I, and brain fog, like yeah. Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
So, you know, what I, what I want to reinforce here is just be very careful about what you believe from the pundits. There's a lot of people who think that they've got it all figured out when all, essentially what they're drawing from is a bunch of he said, she said opinions that have come up through historical narratives. Just stay open to certain things. It doesn't mean, like, condone Putin unless you know, unless you're, like, his best pal and you're, like, know he's doing something good. Uh, I think it's not as cut and dry as good and evil. I mean, people are dying, which is not good. Mm -hmm. But, like, this idea that we know what's going on, if you don't see the parallels to what's happening today to 9-11, then it's like you didn't, you missed a lesson back then. Right. And it's like they can get you to get on board with all kinds of craziness like they did with COVID. And, and that doesn't, you can still understand that without condoning what Putin's doing. That's right. But yeah. just don't act like you don't even understand what he's doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, they don't talk about the neo Nazi faction that he's taking out there. They don't talk about how Ukraine is a hub for corruption globally. You know what I mean? They don't talk about Soros. They don't talk about Burisma. You try to talk about these things, you get canceled. So. Right, right. Or you're you're not sympathetic to the plight of the Ukrainians who are suffering under the yoke of Russian oppression. Right. Just you know. like remind yourself that you have no effing clue, and remind yourself that these people have lied to you routinely in the past. So just that's all you really need to take from this, because no matter what you think, it's not going to change what's happening over there. Right. So. Right. Exactly. So. Uh, so yeah. So there you have it, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Um, and by the way, just a reminder. We're going to try to answer more questions when we do go live. So if you ever got a question, just pop it in the chat. I'm trying to check the chat as we go here. Um, also a reminder, links in the description. we got an awesome promo happening right now. Get yourself that EMF protection. Also, we appreciate all the support. Thank you for those who have supported us over the past few days. It goes a lot to helping us do what we want to do. Yeah, it's going to help us go to the uh, Free America. Uh, exactly. You want to mention that now? Yeah, might as well. What the heck? It's a couple months out, but it's going to be a fun event. You should go. If you do go, you can get to meet us. That's right. So um, we are right now we're fundraising um, to go to the America Tour event. Um, what the heck is it called? It's Time to Free America. Time to Free America. You time go to timetofreeamerica.com. Time we're going to be at the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina event on the 13th, 13th. and 14th of May, I believe. Yes. Or is, is it the 14th and 15th? It's in that. 13th and 14th. I can uh, tell you what, if you just go to timetofreeamerica.com, right. you can find out exactly what is happening <laughs> and what you got to do, all the hoops you got to jump through to get a ticket. Yeah. They're, They'll negotiate with you, too, by the way. So mm -hmm. if you don't, don't feel like paying $150 for a two day ticket to go meet, you know, Mike Lindell and. Clay Clark and Eric Trump and General Michael Flynn, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The, the list goes on. That's uh, right. You know, you can negotiate with them and they can lower the price. As a matter of fact, if you go to stillnessinthestorm.com forward slash donate, send us a $5 donation or, or more, you know, then we can use that funds to get all the stuff we need. We need to get like a backdrop. We need to get these fancy mic things So because we're going to do interviews there. And ideally, if we get our game tight, which is the whole point we're doing this fundraising, we're going to be able to interview Mike Lindell, General Flynn, Sidney Powell, like potentially some of these people. That's what Clay was fortunate enough to set us up with. So thank you, Clay, for hooking Thanks, us Clay. up with all that big time, seriously. And we're going to get an opportunity to speak to some of the biggest players in the game out there. And your support is going to help make that happen. So thank you in advance for that. Um, all right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we'll see you on Friday, unless something crazy happens, in which case we'll see you.